Hello, everyone. Today I will be talking about the challenges to guaranteeing inclusion and equity to women in science, with a particular focus on Latin America. Um, in the recent years, we have seen an explosion of scandals related to the harassment that women suffer in many fields, including academia. And while this wave took some time to get to Latin America, most likely due to the peculiarities of our culture, which has a lot of machismo ingrained in it, we are now seeing cases being exposed and leading to consequences. And while this is an issue that permeates our community at all levels and has led to many women leaving academia, it is unfortunately not the only issue that women have to face as they try to build up a scientific career. Um, I was not aware that these issues were relatively common also in other countries and in other um, cultures until I started reading about it and discussing it with these two uh, colleagues, one from the UK and one from Canada, while we were all working in Finland. So those, among those issues that we agree that were common everywhere, um, the first of them would be that men prefer to collaborate with other men. As you can see here in the orange bars, the frequency of male-male collaborations is so much higher than for female-females, uh, which is shown in yellow. And this homophily is independent from both biological and academic range. This other study where authors analyze the proportion of women uh, in a list of authors in a given paper, they found that when men were senior authors, the proportion of female authors was often close to zero. Whereas when women were senior authors, the proportions were closer to half and half. Um, these trends were true for journals in different fields like ecology and uh, biotropica, which are uh, relevant to us today. Uh, but also surprisingly, they were uh, very different from, uh, for authors based in Latin America uh, than based in the rest of the world. However, um, even in Latin America, there were huge differences across countries in this uh, proportion of female authors. Interestingly, a different study uh, corroborating the tendency for men to publish more with other men found that mixed gender teams tended to publish in journals with higher impact factors, suggesting that these teams produce better research. The second issue faced by women is the lack of recognition to their contributions. This phenomenon is known as the Matilda effect and can be reflected in the number of citations females get in comparison to men. One factor leading to that is that males tend to cite themselves more, which is not uh, bad per se, um, but that can uh, turn into more citations altogether. This disparity has to do probably with differences between men and, and, and women in personalities, but also it can come from the fact that women tend to author fewer papers overall. For example, in Colombia, in the life sciences, these are the number of published papers per capita uh, for men and women. And although you can see that the tendency is uh, getting better this year, the gap is still huge. These disparities have only been exacerbated due to the COVID pandemic. For example, while the total submissions done by men has always been higher, the increase in submissions was much higher for men than for women during the first months of the pandemic. In the life sciences, uh, shown here at the right, uh, these disparities were particularly stronger among younger academics, which are at the top. But even among women, there are large disparities depending on other factor, whether or not they have children. While just 56% of women without children were able to submit manuscripts as they had planned, only 47% of women with children were able to do the same. And this uh, trend was also found when it comes to meeting deadlines. However, the so-called motherhood penalty is not just a byproduct of the pandemic. As you can see here, 
only 58% of new mothers managed to stay in their STEM job after having their first child, compared to 84% of, of the fathers. On top of that, mothers tend to miss out on events such as conferences or fieldwork much more than other demographics. Here, for example, my research program is carried out in the field in French Guiana. And the last time I was able to go to the field was in 2019. Since 2020, um, and not only because of the pandemic, um, I know that coming back to the Amazon will have to wait for a little while. I am lucky enough to have funds to be able to send my students instead. Um, but I am fully aware that this is a privilege and that for other women, no fieldwork means no data and no data means a gap in their CV in terms of productivity. So these kind of situations put women in a position where they need to, where they feel like they need to choose between having children or keeping their job or publishing more or you know, like the sensation that they cannot have it all. Then even when women manage to do what is expected from them, they are underrepresented in things that matter for their career progression. For example, they are less likely to receive awards, particularly if they come from a middle or low income country, although that trend has been reversing in the last couple of years, luckily, uh, or they are uh, not very likely to be in editorial boards of journals, here shown uh, journals in, in the ecology field. And while it has been improving in the, in the last couple of years, it still reaches only 35%. However, with the massive underrepresentation of scientists from the global south, it is very likely that women from this region uh, have even lower chances of accessing one of those words compared to, to, to uh, women from elsewhere. Finally, as we all know, fewer women make it to the top of the academic ladder. Um, the dropout rate is thus considerably higher for, for women than it is for men. And this phenomenon is not, known as the leaky pipe because it, it uh, um, occurs or it gets higher and higher as the career progresses. So take Finland again, for example. Uh, it's a country that is a reference for gender equality, a great place for early and middle career female researchers. It offers one of the longest paid maternity leaves there is, uh, despite of all these advantages, 70% of full professors in the Nordic countries are still men. So the issues are real and we must fight them as a community, but how? Well, to start with, we can be very careful with setting uh, up new projects, particularly if we will be working in other regions. We should always make every effort to collaborate with local researchers and be cautious not to choose only men among them. Also at the time of writing, we can surely go an extra mile and try and cite the work of female researchers and researchers from other uh, underrepresented groups. It is also time uh, to stop dismissing the literature in languages other than English because local scientists have vital knowledge on the animals or plants or ecosystems that we want to conserve. And sometimes that knowledge is only available in their local language. Now, if we want to be more inclusive with mothers regarding access to events and enabling them to advance their careers, there are many things that we can do, but potentially one of those things that has the highest impact is offering the possibility to participate in conference or, yeah, or seminars online, as I am doing today. This, I would have to say, has been a game changer that we somewhat should be grateful to the pandemic for. Now, if you have already reached a position of power, please nominate your talented students and colleagues for prizes and awards. Also, share the information you have on opportunities in every way you can. And for that, social media have become a great tool. Because sometimes the lack of access to that kind of information is what limits the opportunities for certain demographics. 
And above all, uh, be very aware of how important it is to be to feel that you are represented. So representation matters. And if we uh, are to increase the number of women at the top of the academic ladder, all of these things can or, or should be uh, applied together. But above all, above all, let's work together as a community. Let's voice out our concerns and, and, and be very united in this fight. Uh, once we have reached a position of power where we can help others, well, then let's do it. So women can definitely lift each other up and help them uh, progress in their careers. But let's not forget how important men are in this conversation. We need you as allies, particularly to educate and call out the behavior of other men who may not be so convinced that these issues I have mentioned exist. Increasing the participation and success of underrepresented groups is only possible if we learn to recognize and fight with all our might those biases. Only fighting those biases constantly can we be open to different perspectives. And this is a beautiful example that I would like to end with. Um, of how diversity contributed to changing paradigms uh, in, in ecology, um, this time of, about bird, bird vocalizations. It turns out that mostly female researchers were studying female bird song. And if it weren't for those females, we would be missing out on a lot of knowledge coming from uh, uh, female bird song. So let's continue to fight our biases to be open to diversity because diversity is what makes science better. And with that, I would like to thank all those fabulous role models that I have had, uh, all those female colleagues that have been uh, uh, working with me, all the students um, from whom I learn every day, also my male collaborators and Alice who are um, making my life in academia much richer and more fun. I am very grateful to my partner for his constant encouragement and support, and to my little daughter, Leah, for being a constant and endless source of inspiration and strength. Uh, many thanks to the symposium organizers for allowing me to participate, and thank you very much to all, you all for listening.